give you a little tip on how I do it all while keeping my kids happy and content, and that's wearing them in the Ergo Baby Omni 360. I love my Ergo Baby Omni 360 because it allows me to get stuff done while they want to be held. In the 360, you can actually use it from the point that they're that little tiny human nugget that's all squishy and really needy up until the point that they might actually break your back, although there is great support. I use it when they're cranky at dinner time, but obviously someone still needs to make dinner. Cleaning, DJing. Go to fruitsandmotherhood.com forward slash ergo baby to get free express shipping on any order. That's fruitsandmotherhood.com forward slash ergo baby. Now back to this amazing episode. Hi, my name is Linda Fruits from Fruits and Motherhood, and tonight we'll be speaking with Abby Williams from Mimosas with Moms. She's going to tell us what it means to be a mom of multiples, and if you truly can win at co-parenting. I'm going to have you introduce yourself. Perfect. My name is Abby Williams. I am a licensed social worker. I am a behavioral health therapist. I work mainly with kids and teens. I am a mom of four. It's loud at my house all the time. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I run the Mimosas with Moms platform. So I have the Mimosas with Moms podcast and my social media platforms. So I I start Mimosas with Moms was born from a place of I started my motherhood journey at 21 years old before there was social media really. Uh, Facebook had like just kind of come about. There wasn't Facebook groups yet. So you couldn't like plug into all these mom groups. When I first had him, I didn't even have a smartphone yet. So like when you're up in the middle of the night, like what's the matter with my baby? I couldn't even like Google, you know? Oh my goodness. Um, Yeah. So it was just like a completely different time. And it was before a lot of my peers were having babies. So I didn't even have like that connection, that community to really plug into. Mm -hmm. So I just like knew that this was always going to be a passion for me, that I didn't want moms to go through their motherhood journey feeling isolated and alone. And then six years later, I had my next child and I haven't stopped having babies three back to back. It's been nuts. But I found myself having a lot of those same feelings where Mm -hmm. motherhood just is lonely at times. Mm -hmm. You do need a community. And so that's where Mimosas with Moms has like really brought you know so much to so many but it's brought so much to me as well and yeah I just and that's where we've connected Linda yeah I love that you gave me goosebumps I know you know (laughs) I like I love all the connections that we've made over there I think accounts like ours they're needed Mm -hmm. and they fill my cup you know (laughs) oh my god yeah people someone asked me today if I regret it I'm like not never for a second what I get back is so much more for them and for me but on your account do you get like negativity yeah of course do you do you get like trolling over there uh uh-huh I I ignore that as much as possible yeah It's hard though, you know, like I think that people really forget that there's a very human person behind these accounts. We are a mom just like every other person. You have how many followers now? A hundred something thousand. Yeah, 89. Yeah, you're coming up at 200. Yeah. Good for you. We're working on that. (laughs) Yeah, you know, and I'm at 80,000 and it's like, you have these large accounts and it's like, I don't know, I feel like you kind of lose your humanity a little bit when you have these large followings. I'm like, we are a mom just like all the rest of you in the thick of it. (laughs) Of course, warming up chicken nuggets, doing dishes, laundry, like crying and not crying. (laughs) Exactly. Exhausted. I know, I know. Did you always want a big family? You know, it's really funny because I feel like growing up, I didn't really want a family. I kind of had, I come from a family of of like a lot of dysfunction, to say it kind of nicely, I guess. And I didn't really know that I really ever wanted to have children. I thought I wanted like a career and I wanted to do all these things. And I've still done all the things I wanted to do. Right, I was going to say both. (laughs) Yeah, so now I just do both of them. And then I had Oliver was an unplanned pregnancy at 21. I was halfway through my bachelor's degree. And he has given me so much more purpose in life than I could have ever anticipated. And then after him, I kind of knew I wanted four. 
Okay. So I went so from like zero the plan. to four. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we brought Fitz home like this time last year. Mm-hmm. And I looked at my husband. I'm like, I don't know if I've done. <laughs> I know. I don't I, know. I, I, yeah. You know, and I, I just like the didn't same thing. know. I was like in 30 years old, like we could wait three, five years and I could have another one. Yeah. You know, like I'm still so young. And then when he was seven weeks old, the pandemic hit and we got locked down. And I'm like, yeah, we might be two, four might have been too many. <laughs> <laughs> Even this me, is I'm actually like, two kind kids of nuts. is too many. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of nuts. We have to be done. <laughs> so we haven't made any permanent changes. I know what you mean. Stopping, but mm-hmm. we need to be done over here. I told my husband this morning, I'm like, I feel 50% done. Yeah. But like 50% of me is like 100% gung ho on having I more know. kids. It's a I weird know. feeling. It like, is how a weird can I feeling. I want both. I know. You know, and I don't think that I'll ever like not want another like newborn. I love yeah. that new phase, the bringing home your new baby yeah. and they're squishy and like it is so hard. Oh my God. So hard. The hardest. But, I but so cute. I love it. I love mm-hmm. it. I will miss having a baby at my house. You must do really good on no sleep. <laughs> well, I haven't slept in five years, so, right, so I'm you're still used to standing. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I literally have not slept through the night in five years. Oh my gosh, girl. I know. I'm like, th- that's not well. That's not you, good. But you look fantastic well, for not sleeping. So Let's like, just get that out of the way. We have to be done because I have to go back to sleeping. And <laughs> You don't even know what that is anymore. I know. I know. What will I do with like this post-baby life? I know. It's going to be a new set of challenges. Oh, for sure. And I, and I mean, <laughs> your babies are always still your babies, I right? Know. Like I know. Yeah, the oldest is 10 now. Mm -hmm. It is now just a whole new world and appreciation Mm -hmm. where your babies are so cuddly and they're on you and they're like physically needing of you, which is also very draining and hard. (laughs) But now I have like this relationship with one of my children for the first time where we can like talk to each other. I can show up as a human and I'm like, mom's having a really hard time right now. And I can like really kind of, not that I'm like unloading on my kid because I don't think that that's healthy either. But I think that showing some of your humanness with them really shows them that I'm it's allowed okay. to have feelings. Yeah. 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 It's okay to have a bad day. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I love like hearing about his peer stuff and like uh-huh. what the kids are doing and who's into girls and who's like, who's doing what. I think it's like fascinating. I love like hearing about that it. I'm just cute. like, tell me everything that's happening. <laughs> right? Like, what's happening in the yeah. world out there? Yeah. yeah. And he is very, he tells his mama everything. I'm like, mm-hmm. I hope we always have this relationship. <laughs> that is so sweet and something I obviously strive to have with yeah. my kids. That sounds wonderful. That sounds so sweet. Yeah. So let's talk about your pregnancies a little bit. You yeah. had some medicated and unmedicated, I right? I you want to tell me a little bit about it that? It was like a, two very extremes. So Oliver and Beatrice, the second born, they were both nine days late. They both had to have a doctor come in and say, hey, it's time to get out of here. So I was induced with both of them. So scheduled, went in, started by Pitocin. As mm-hmm. soon as like, anything started feeling something, some kind of way, I'm like, yep, I think I'm ready for that epidural now. Uh-huh. So I literally like never experienced labor with my first mm-hmm. two births. Like, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Then when Beatrice was six months old, I got pregnant with Josie. They're 15 Mm -hmm. months apart. Did not know you could get pregnant while breastfeeding, but here we are. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That was nuts. Uh I literally like cried. Like, I can't have a baby. I already have a baby. I know. It's scary. But honestly, it's my favorite age gap. So yeah, I think that having babies so close together, your body is like, yep, we know what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. So nine days early, Josie Uh came and I woke up in the middle of the night. I went to the bathroom, like some labor things were happening. I like come back to bed and my husband's like looking at me. I'm like, so I think something's happening here. He's like, like, what? Like, well, I don't really know. Like I've never gone through this before. Like Uh this is my third child, but I've never experienced labor. Uh So I come, so I finally, I'm like starting to have contractions. They're pretty like close together. Like it was going Mm -hmm. fast. 
Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, no. My hair appointment's tomorrow. Like, I can't have this baby right now. This is literally my conversation. He's like, amazing. you have to call your doctor right now. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, like everything is scheduled for, for tomorrow. I'm getting my hair done. I'm getting my waxing. I'm getting my toes done. Like, I can't go have a baby looking like this. No, I did anyway. So we got to the hospital 20 minutes later. She was on the outside. I like walked in and the first thing I said was, I have to get an epidural. Like I can not have this baby without an epidural uh-huh. and they are like yeah maybe and my nurses were like they were giving me the run around they're like you're definitely yeah. not getting one but yeah maybe. Like, it was too late you're right so finally like before the doctor's walking in i'm like looking back at them and i'm like who's gonna get real with me and tell me i'm not <laughs> getting an epidural and they're like okay listen you are not getting an epidural but like you got this girl like come on oh my god like i can't do it i did it and honestly <laughs> The recovery without the epidural was so much better. It was like night and day for me. Same with Fitz. He came 11 days early, which was another like whirlwind craziness. Marcus had been traveling. We live in Ohio. He was in California for a week on a business trip. And and I was like yelling at him the whole time. Like, you cannot go on this business trip. It's like, it's mandatory. Like, I can't get out of it. We're this mm-hmm. far away from your due date. You'll be fine. I'm like, I will right. definitely not be fine. Right. He's coming. So, yeah. <laughs> so he landed and eight hours later, I went into labor. We pulled into the hospital to have fits and we weren't able to like park the car. He was like, just like pulling it in. There was like a, we we're like screaming. Of course. Like, Pats her by, like lady walking by. She's like, oh, park your car, like go, go. And uh, five minutes later, he was on the outside, no epidural. So, but it was amazing. Those two, pre- those two births as just crazy and whirlwind as they were. Mm-hmm. Because I had my two hours of skin to skin time. And then I was up and walking around where like when you have your epidural, you're like in bed all day waiting for that thing to wear off. You have a catheter going. So like there was pros and cons to both, right? Like I felt freaking everything with the last two, but (laughs) I think that getting right up after birth and like walking around was better for my mental health it was better mm-hmm. for my physical recovery yeah because honestly like but moving in the scary <laughs> yeah yeah moving in the bed um, i remember that being one of the hardest things just yeah. like positioning myself right, right. and then you're so also, uncomfortable but you can't yeah. move yeah my legs were like dead <laughs> weight and i remember thinking like i was getting concerned the second yeah. time i was like are my legs gonna come back <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's like worried. a whole ordeal, you know? Yeah. So all different, you know, if you and... had to have a fifth baby, obviously you're going to go I unmedicated. Know. I don't know. Honestly, it probably just because if you had a choice, it would yeah. go so fast, you know, right, like, but let's my, say you had a choice. Let's if I had a choose. choice, I don't know that I could honestly make the choice to put myself through like willingly an an unmedicated birth you know what I mean just like knowing how like yeah Mm -hmm. like oh you feel everything but it's so much faster or it was for me it was faster and my recovery was better but it's like scary yeah yeah. birthing a baby is scary and it never gets like not scary right right no just you talking (laughs) about it makes me get the jitters I'm like oh boy Yeah, you push a whole human out of there. That's, you know, it's nuts that we do that as women. It is. We are nuts. It it is pretty crazy. And I think, like, part of me, when I hear that, I'm not sure that I'll ever not want to do it again. I know. Also, which is also crazy. Because it's also, like, equally, like, so badass, right? Mm -hmm. Like, your body did this. Yeah, like, your body birthed four humans. I know, you got it, girl. (laughs) <laughs> oh man yeah and you also don't know the sex usually that your first you this was the only one that we found out gender for and that was only because of oliver he wanted to know yeah he hates surprises he okay. has always been a per- personality type that kind of needs to know like what's gonna happen mm-hmm, and i, I think a that. lot of that is he's from a co-parenting situation uh-huh. so he, we prepare him a lot for the changes that are coming to his life because his life is always like kind of changing and there's a lot of transitions that he goes through daily 
Mm-hmm. So we're always kind of telling him what's going on. And then so for the girls, when they were born and going through the pregnancies, not knowing, am I getting a brother or a sister? Uh-huh. It's like, what? <laughs> And there was like so much like hype up in him that like mm-hmm. I'm getting a brother for sure. For sure Aww. I'm getting a brother. And then he came to the hospital. He's like, like, it's a girl. He's like, okay. <laughs> he's so good with his sisters. I've like just him. really, really wanted a brother. So I knew, like, we kind of knew Fitz was gonna be the last. And we're like, right, if this is another girl, like <laughs> we have to prepare him before he comes to the hospital. Okay, like, I'm not having sense. I'm not having this like whole meltdown of like I'm never getting a brother. Right. <laughs> you I can't make any more humans. I know. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't do that. So like God was listening and he brought Oliver a brother. And it's just so funny. Oliver walks in off the school bus and he's like, You're home. <laughs> so every day it's like I can't believe you came back oh my god the two of them they are so funny I hope it's always like that I hope so too but how lovely I think Fitz was made for him definitely definitely they are so cute together so you definitely have a lot of secrets since you've made so many humans (laughs) what are some things that you've learned from each child moving on like something maybe you didn't know you know what I mean and yeah and i think that with each birth with each child a new version of yourself really is born i think that that's one of the most marvelous parts of motherhood is that we're always evolving and we're always changing Mm -hmm. i find that inspiring with my girls they challenge me the hardest in ways that just like shake me to my core at times and probably is what i need the most they are probably what i need the most. They make me stronger. They make me have to look in the mirror and say, you need to find some patience. Like you (laughs) can't squash them. They are like a huge mirror for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's important. I think that self-reflection and growing is so important. Oliver, he will always like be kind of one of the uh, will always be kind of special just of our course. journey together and we grew up together I was a kid when I had him mm-hmm. and just finding myself while figuring out how to be a mother I learned so much from him and he he is one of my biggest teachers just what life should be like what joy is what love is and then Fitz brought so much warmth and joy into our home this year being born right before the pandemic and just having that you know that squish (laughs) that was there I, I don't know like how honestly I would have gone through this year without having that baby and him him particularly you know what I mean because like he is just so warm so loving he gives the biggest hugs I've ever mm-hmm. received. He's like his father. And then I'm like, you're a baby. Right? <laughs> he so... just like, oh, he uh-huh. grabs you in. Oh God, I love that. That's yeah. so sweet. I think him and Owen would get along because Owen gives these like kind of uh, aggressive, yes. rough hugs. Yes. Like he throws yeah. his whole body onto yes. you when he goes for him for a hug, <laughs> including a headbutt. Like it is all or nothing with him, but same like, the happiness he has brought me and the the parts of me that he has also changed yeah. like you mentioned yeah and he's so happy like it, it was Just definitely so the happy light. like you yeah. had no idea like that this was the worst year ever right it was <laughs> you're awful. just the happiest yeah yeah but then this little you know at home it was a happy home thankfully yeah i know uh, for sure and then so since you are very good at this how do you juggle everything yeah. Gosh, I have no idea. I have like <laughs> no idea how I do what I do. I don't sleep, like I mentioned. So I guess that helps or it doesn't. Do you work at night? Like, do you stay up? No, I have to go to bed when the kids go to bed. Okay, same. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm like, I wish I could like get some things done. And I hate that we get ourselves in these p- comparison traps, right? Yeah. But I'll like see other people on social media they're like oh put the kids to bed and I'm like catching up on this I'm like I I have to go to bed I know and then I get nothing done during the day because they're here you know what I mean yeah yeah because they need snacks and the spoon is wrong and there's a bump in their sock and yeah I think that how do I do it all 
I don't. And I don't think that everybody does. I don't think anybody does. And I think that kind of shifting that mindset is really Mm -hmm. important because like I said, I think it's really easy to get into that comparison trap of thinking Mm -hmm. these perfect squares on Instagram and they're doing it all. And like, (laughs) nobody is doing it all. Like we're all just like hanging on by a thread, right? Mm -hmm. But we have good communication in our home most of the time. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of grace we for each other and ourselves Mm -hmm. we meet each other where we're at we are having some toddlers that are having a hard time right now Mm -hmm. and being very understanding of like they are in a developmental thing right now like they're just having a hard time she's having big emotions Mm -hmm. and she doesn't have the language to pair with these big emotions so like let's all be a little easier on her yeah Yeah. like just meet her where she's at and like so we're constantly having to kind of have those conversations with the kids that are older than her Mm -hmm. with each other you're like you're looking like you're a little burnt out right the second let's tap out i'll tap Mm -hmm. in so we take turns and we meal plan i don't know how people meal don't like that was our biggest stressor like dinner honestly i think meal planning has saved my marriage That makes total sense because that was also something I was going to ask you. Like, how the hell do you feed everybody? Yeah, yeah. We meal plan. Do they eat? I have a big board in my kitchen and like it says what we are eating for like every meal. And then on the other side, it's like we have swim lessons on Tuesday, all of us volleyball on Thursday, you know, like where the kids need to be. And if we're not like very intentional with what we're doing, then we have it comes 5 p.m marcus is walking in the door from work i'm burnt out from being here with the kids and i'm hangry the kids are hangry marcus right. like, <laughs> i just got home yeah. like, this is a nut and like so that was going on for a while where we were like okay what are we gonna do so maybe like it's not meals in your home but like whatever mm-hmm. is the stressor find something that's like going to fix that make that easier and things will be better Yeah. Meals. Definitely. (laughs) The dinner thing. It's very stressful because like my toddler doesn't eat what I cook. The little one usually still eats, but does everyone eat a dinner? Do you make one meal? No, no. Today we made cheeseburgers. That was what was on the uh, board. Uh And uh, yeah, no, the toddlers both did not eat. No, no. The baby ate. The baby ate and Oliver got to go to his dad's. So nope. Mm -hmm. Oliver lived on chicken nuggets until he was like six. Okay, so good to know. If like you're just doing chicken I'm right nuggets, on track. <laughs> he's still met all of his like growth chart, like whatever things, and he's uh-huh. healthy and well and he's smart and he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. That's really good news. And I think a lot of yeah, people would like fine. hearing that. <laughs> he's fine. And I think that like we get so hung up on that it needs to look like this certain way. Yeah. And I just like don't believe I, in that. But like honestly, I, I before I became a mom, I thought that's just what happened. I thought you right. cooked, everybody ate, everybody yeah. took a bath, everybody went to sleep. I didn't even know you had to teach kids to sleep. Yeah. Like I had no idea what I was getting myself into. <laughs> right. I, and it's well, just the movies too confused much. me. <laughs> It does. It does. Right. We just like really set moms up with this unrealistic, what it looks like. And I think I just, and I really listen to my kids. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a huge thing that I've learned in the past couple of years, because Oliver wasn't like my other children. He was very Mm -hmm. easy, but having to listen to them and their needs, because they're not always going to conform to what you not. want to be doing, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> like, no, they are their own person, whether you mm-hmm. want them to be or not. So I really like try and listen to what they need. And maybe that's that. crackers and cheese for dinner and not a cheeseburger. <laughs> and like, I'm not having that fight. I yeah, don't care. No, it's, I don't think I don't it's care. worth it. Yeah. If you eat something, that's fine. But I give options on like, all right, this is the meal that I made. And if that's not what you're eating, then you can have a peanut butter and jelly or Mm -hmm. crackers and salami and cheese. (laughs) I love (laughs) that. Yeah, I'm like, those are your two options tonight. And then they get to choose and they feel like they're in control and I'm not having a mom meltdown. So it's right for everybody. (laughs) I I love that genuinely. I think that's wonderful. I mean, my my toddler usually eats a peanut butter and jelly. So he's always picking yeah. that option. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's fine. Like, mm-hmm. Do any of your kids share a room? Yes. They do? The girls. Do the girls? Uh-huh. The girls. They do. I know. It's a good and bad thing. 
When did um, they start? They started, gosh, when did we move Josie? I'm considering it. <laughs> I know, because she was in the crib in that room. Mm-hmm. I don't know when they started, to be honest. So it was like Maybe crib they've always and been in there. I don't think Josie's ever been in that other room because we had that as the guest room, and now it's not a guest room, it's Fitz's room. He's the new guest. <laughs> yeah, he's the new guest. So sorry, <laughs> in-laws, you can't stay with us anymore. So yeah, I guess that they've like really always shared. So I guess we probably moved Josie in there when she was like six months old. Cause I would go in there and rock her in the middle of the night. She was doing night feedings in that room. And she honestly, she never bothered B, uh-huh. like being up and down in the night. They bother each other more now. Right. Yeah, which I think is not what I would have expected. Exactly, I know. We you had know? a rough time trying to have the room share when they were little, but yeah. Ellie is a little more sensitive. Yeah. And I thought maybe when they're older, it'll be the opposite. Maybe they'll yeah. be a little better. Yeah. So they, they wake each other up. B is a really bad sleeper. She'll be, she's four. Mm-hmm. And she's like an early riser, but like mm-hmm. I'm talking early, like three, four o'clock in the morning oh. and like wants to be up for the day. Oh my god! Like that doesn't work. So you don't sleep. So we don't sleep. So then it's like a fight. So we got the stoplight clock that everybody's mm-hmm. like, oh, get the stoplight clock. And when it turns green, then they can come out. Well, like this, no, she does not going to do that. No. Yeah. Elliot doesn't um, care either. We just yeah. did this last night. I'm right. Like, yeah. Is it green? He's care. like, no, no, turn it green. Yeah, no, but don't care. And so she cared for like the first week. She would uh-huh. wait until it turned green but then she would wake her sister up to come with her. Like, hey, the light's green, so it's time to wake up, we gotta go. And I'm like, listen, your sister actually is a good sleeper. Like she'll sleep Mm -hmm. until nine o'clock probably if we'd let her. So she's like waking her sister up and- How do you juggle the bedtime with everyone? The bedtimes. I put Fitz to sleep first. He goes down about 7, 15, 7, 30. And then the girls go to bed right after he's down, which I normally, share the load with my husband so i do mm-hmm. fits he puts the girls to bed and then okay. oliver gets tucked in at 8 30. it's okay. so like by 8 30 they're all asleep it's like an hour long like yeah. trying to get everybody down but then they're all asleep and then i'm in my bed texting marcus like i need water and ice cream <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're the same person. <laughs> okay, be right up. He's yeah. tucking you in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he brings up all my treats. <laughs> oh, are you going to turn on the TV? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm a joy. <laughs> you are. And yeah. then, so does he go to bed at the same time as you, or do you? you yeah, Because yeah. Christopher stays up late still after I, I go to bed 8 39. Yeah. Does he like bring his stuff into bed with you, though? Or is he like no, out I make like him working? Leave. Yeah. Yeah. I make him leave. I'm like, are you going to go to sleep or are you going to get out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I need to yeah. like. Because you to need to like sleep. your sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Because like Marcus will have his computer out, but like that won't bother me. I can mm-hmm. still like roll over and go to bed. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. So he usually comes up with me, but he's usually up pretty late working on the oh, computer. Really? Yeah. Well, that's good. At least it doesn't bother you. I'm such yeah. a light sleeper. Him yeah. like looking at his phone. I can feel him awake. I'm like, can you stop? I can feel your energy being awake. I say that. Can you go, go take that somewhere else, please? I feel crazy. I know. No, I'm, when Marcus is like stressed, because he like never gets stressed. I'm the stressful one all the time uh-huh. in our relationship. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I can feel your energy. And like, I'm the only person that's allowed anxiety here. It's like, I get sure. stressed like once a month. Like, I'm allowed like, to have my have once this. a month. Like, yeah. nope, I'm having a hard time right now. I can feel your energy. It's got to go. <laughs> I know That's we're so funny. nice to like these poor men I know they love us thankfully they love us I know <laughs> so back to all of these kids did you yeah. start using a diaper maybe a more expensive diaper and then move to like a cheaper diaper by the fourth you know what I've always used just like the same things with all of them yeah like some pampers have just always worked for us yeah I love the some like people I have some friends that do like the cloth diapering I'm like Uh that's so nice I could never do that because I've always had like two in diapers (laughs) yeah oh my gosh you'd have to buy so many Uh, yeah I'm like there's just no way yeah I'm like I don't use like normal things that mm-hmm. most parents are like your must-haves on your baby registry like I've it's never happy. used I've never used a baby monitor 
I've never had a baby uh, monitor with not one of my children. Have I had a baby monitor? Good um, for you. I'm like, I can always hear them, you know, and now like they have the video and I think like that would be worse for me. Like if I could mm-hmm. like wake up and like look at them and watch them, I don't think I'd ever sleep. Uh, maybe that's my problem. <laughs> I'm gonna, I think I'd always be like, are they awake? <laughs> Let me yeah. look. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, like we are like with our phones, like as soon as you wake up, you're like, what's going on in here? Yeah, you know. Um, like, I just don't think that that would be healthy for me. Yeah, and if they're um, quiet, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, and then I know that some, you know, Do people you peek have. Them? Not really. Like, no, okay, just wondering. Not really. If they're sleeping longer than normal. Like, oh yeah, you go in and you're Are like... you okay in here? <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are you all right? <laughs> yeah, all right, I see you breathe and you're good. But no, not really. They wake up. They let me know what, the, what they need. Absolutely. Yeah. No, but that's a good thing. I was, I was so, I had so much anxiety with my first yeah. that I was like glued to the monitor. Yeah, like I've glued. never had the monitor. And maybe it was like that I had Oliver before a lot of that technology really came mm-hmm. out. And so like the monitors back then was just like the walkie talkie, like, you know. The listening thing. Yeah, the right? listening. Yeah. And I'm like, well, his room's right next to mine. Like I can hear him just fine. Yeah. Like <laughs> so like, breathing. I don't need this. Right. Uh-huh. And like, so it was just never an issue for me so then when we were registering six years later when I was having Beatrice I'm like no I don't need that I got through it I got through the first without that like I don't need that Mm -hmm. another one was a baby bath I've never used like the plastic like Uh baby bath I've never used that I've always just like put them in the sink and just, it yeah. still takes sink baths he in the does? kitchen. Yeah, he takes oh his baths gosh. in the kitchen. That's so cute. You know, I'm like, but he, I've done, always done like baby led weaning. So when he's mm-hmm. done eating, he's just oh, yeah, a he's just... hot mess. Yeah. Like, so I just take him out of the high chair and like right into the sink. And he mm-hmm. gets a bath there until they're like big enough to sit in a real bath. Like that's mm-hmm. where they get bathed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, that makes total sense. We also you know? do the baby led weaning and so yeah. messy. So it's messy. so messy. And like, I love it so much. Uh, it yeah. is a mess. It's really like their first little step to independence. And I I, I do enjoy it. Fitz and I is my only one. Them. I know. Fitz is my only one that's been like a food thrower. Do your boys throw food? Oh my food? gosh. I, it's coming. It's definitely coming. Like none of my other kids did this. He will just look at you and I'm like, no. And he chucks it. Like he has an arm and he just thinks it's hilarious. The dogs are like, this is great. Right. And I'm like, oh my gosh. He does not care. He does not care about anything. <laughs> Today, he, Marcus was sitting on the couch and he just like climbs right up on the couch. He wanted the remote. Marcus was like giving it to him. He climbs up, he like takes it right out of his hands. I'm like, Oh you are God. a fresh one-year-old, like right. just turned one. Uh-huh. Why, for one, like, why are you climbing on the couch? How can you do this? I know. You know? Owen does it too. Oh. He runs to the couch yes. and then lays down on it like, this yeah, is where I belong. Like, yeah, it doesn't care. And at bedtime, he cries. I pick him up. He's like laying face down like, with his pillow. Yeah. Like, this is where he wants to sleep. I'm like... Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, he's a climber. I've never had a climber before. I'm like, uh-huh. I don't know what I'm going to do with this kid. Yeah, because he doesn't you care. Never, you didn't have any kids climbing out of the crib or anything? No, no. Like, Josie was in a crib until I needed it for fits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's nice. Same with B, but she was 15, she 18 got evicted months a old. Sooner. Yeah, yeah. She got <laughs> evicted a lot sooner. <laughs> Poor girl. What yeah. else did you not use? Gosh, I think like that might be, you know. Did you use, and then, you like, use my... a baby carrier, right? I did, but I suck at baby wearing. <laughs> I do. I don't, I don't like, think you can suck at it. I totally did. It just like never felt natural or like, okay, I don't know, I felt fair. uncomfortable. And like, all I wanted to do was wear them. But I hurt like my back. I don't oh know. Oh my God. I know. It doesn't know. hurt. It hurts I love your back, right? Him. Yeah. But Owen, just when he was getting too heavy, I'm like, okay, Art, it's over. It's done. He's a big boy though. Oh my God. So <laughs> heavy. So heavy. Like my back. Well, like, where does he get that from? I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> and it's not even like he overeats. I know. He doesn't even drink that much milk. Like, I just don't understand. He is like fluffy. He is a big boy. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah, his I belly, love like, that. 
Me too. He's like nine months <laughs> pregnant on a good day. I'm like, that is cute. I know. <laughs> yeah, Fitz was getting ready for his bath today, like standing uh-huh. on the counter naked, like with his big old belly. And I was like mocking him, like, oh, look oh, at yeah. you. Oh, God. Uh-huh. I can just like eat him up. Mm-hmm. I know. I love it. <laughs> So cute. I feel like they're they're just the same baby. We're just sharing them. I know. know. And uh, what is your favorite go-to activity with kids at home? Mm, Crafts. Some people like hate the crafts. Mine's like Play-Doh. So many people are like, no, never having Play-Doh in our house. Every day. Ever. But like when my girls sit down at that table with, and I have like these mats that they put out, put Uh down and they do their crafts on the mats. It's like a really easy cleanup. They will sit there for hours That's and wonderful. just color, Play-Doh, uh-huh. like you gotta watch Josie because she likes to use everything but paper as her canvas, like herself. Oh, very creative. <laughs> the furniture. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice. She painted uh, my best friend's side of her house with a stamp pad. Oh, like, how sweet of her. Thanks, Josie. She's an I artist. don't know how we're going to get that off. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for doing that. Yeah, so she, you got to watch her. But no, like they will just sit and do that. We also, we do games and the toddlers are now both kind of getting to an age where they can do board games to get like uh-huh. our whole family uh-huh. so we'll do like sorry we'll do candy land we have some other like toddler games the other night the toddlers actually initiated like charades i don't How even cute. know like where like they would have learned this from because uh-huh. we've never played this in our house yeah. but they were like over and they were acting out different animals like oh guess what animal i am how and then cute. Oliver was like, oh, this looks like fun. So he like joined in and I'm like, Aww. this looks like fun. So I joined in and then Marcus mm-hmm. was in and we were so funny and so much fun. We were just laughing and mm-hmm. acting out different animals. And yeah, it was cute. I love like, that. I love like activities where we're all doing things together. I love traveling with my family and I miss it so much. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> like we travel a lot. So I'm ready for this year to get back to normal, yeah, <laughs> get back on the road. Mm-hmm. We like road trip. I know. So do you usually travel by car? Yeah, we do. Like, but that's just, great. Like, with how many kids we have, like flying yeah. is so freaking expensive. That's what I was going to ask. Like, that's a lot of flights. That's, <laughs> that's a lot of seats. Flights. That's six seats. Like that is so expensive. So just for us, it's way more economical to drive. Um, we usually mm-hmm. break it up. Since my husband travels a lot for work, we stay at Marriott's on mm-hmm. points. We never pay for rooms. So we like break up the room, break up the trip. And we like That's stay great. in Atlanta. If we're going to Florida. Like uh-huh. Atlanta's like kind of halfway. Oh yeah. And you are going to come to Florida, right? You're going to be. I think so. We were, I know I was texting you like, what's the weather like in, yeah. <laughs> in the winter down there? Should we mm-hmm. come down there for this time? I know. Well, we have so many points since we didn't travel in 2020, mm-hmm. but now we fire by the end of this year and we're like we have so many points we're like i don't know how we're gonna use all these you have to come to florida it's we have to travel whether there's COVID or not this year (laughs) we'll just be cautious or we'll i don't know yeah (laughs) but we're traveling (laughs) i know i know it's hard hopefully we'll like be vaccinated by some point i know my grandmother was just telling me I could get some because I have kids. I'm like, I don't think that's how that works. But I don't think so either. But maybe <laughs> it's, it's different. Like, like the general population isn't yet. My uh-huh. great grandmother or my grandmother, my kid's great grandmother is mm-hmm. fully vaccinated. I have some other friends that are like in the healthcare field that are mm-hmm. vaccinated. Yeah, but since I work in private practice, like we're not on the list like yeah Yeah, marketing (laughs) nowhere near (laughs) not very essential Uh, i guess we can work at home so they're like you're fine just be at home on your telehealth exactly (laughs) i just want to be out in the world Mm -hmm. yeah what are your beliefs on screen time you know i think i'm not against screen time and i don't really know that there needs to be like strict rules around screen time either and i think that whatever you need for your mental health should always be top priority because if mom doesn't feel good the rest of the house isn't going to feel good i think that our temperature so much controls the temperature of the home Mm -hmm. so if you are feeling hot (laughs) the rest of the home is going to be hot and Mm -hmm. that's not good so if you need like an hour 
and you need to plug your kids in, plug your kids in. We don't use screen time a whole lot at my house, which is kind of surprising. We had, we made a no screen time rule during the week on the school nights, mostly for like my big kid. I just, I don't know. I want to interact with him. I want him out of it. I can just like see like the light at the end of the tunnel with him a little bit, like being 10 and I'm like in a couple more years, you're going to be even more busy and sports and with peers and you're not going to want to be at home with mom. So I'm like kind of soaking up this time and more intentional with my time with him. Plus he's mm-hmm. only here 50% of the time. So we made that rule. They get screen time on the weekends in the morning. Mm-hmm. And mostly that's so like me and Marcus can maybe kind of sleep in a little bit. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, go get your tablets. Like I'm going to keep closing my eyes and like listening. So that's kind of what we do there. We'll do like family movie night. But I'm like, my girls have learned so much from their screens. You know, right. like they've been great aides for learning your ABCs, like so many, there's so much educational stuff on there now that I'm like, Mm -hmm. plug them into something educational. So you're not feeling, yeah. if they need to plug in and watch my girls are big on the Gabby's dollhouse on Netflix right now. Uh Uh-huh. I've seen that. I like (laughs) here, (laughs) I watched one more episode of Gabby. Yeah. (laughs) But no, I'm not against screen time. Like use it. Mm-hmm. however you need to use it. Right. That yeah. makes total sense. So then uh, let's talk about that 50% of the time. Let's talk yeah. about co-parenting. Yeah. We have a really unique co-parenting relationship on our end. And I think that that really comes out of kind of the way that Oliver came into the world. We weren't married. So there really wasn't like this ugly breakup or a divorce. Mm -hmm. I think divorces have so many emotions and you have money and assets. You have so many things that you're separating that I get like why that's way harder. So we didn't have any of that. So for us, it's been a lot easier to kind of check our emotions at the door when co-parenting. And I work with a lot of families on navigating some of those feelings and not sticking our kids with some of that emotional stuff because like our tiny people they feel it they feel it when mom and dad aren't getting along they Mm -hmm. feel it when you don't like their other parent and sometimes a lot of that then gets internalized and i know that like there's so many well-intentioned parents out there that are just like struggling and having a hard time but then our kids end up struggling and having a hard time too Mm -hmm. so We have always made very intentional decisions on how to only communicate about our child. Like we're not really texting about like our lives. Right. (laughs) It's like, hey, Uh I saw that golf got added to the school sports. I'm going to sign Oliver up. We split everything 50-50. So here's what you owe me for golf. Mm -hmm. Like those are our communications. And I know that there's some co-parenting situations where communication isn't really achievable. And I think, you know, yeah, it stinks. But our co-parenting relationship, it's always been pretty amicable. We celebrate birthdays together we go to the pumpkin patch every year together we take pictures in the pumpkins all of us every single year i think it's important for oliver to have family pictures of his family every year Mm -hmm. and his family just looks different and we used to celebrate christmas morning all together and now Oliver's here on Christmas mornings and his dad's like, I'll just pick him up like after you guys do. <laughs> I think if cool. he doesn't, he doesn't believe in Santa anymore. Uh, so I think well, like true. once like that yeah. kind of fizzled out, he's like, I'll just pick him up after I'll sleep right. in. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so he doesn't feel like that. left out. I mean, it stinks, but so yeah, we share. It's hard. Even mm-hmm. like having an amicable yeah. co-parenting situation, it's not natural to give up your child 50% of the time. Yeah, it's hard. You guys are good at communication, but do you have mm-hmm. bad days? And, and like, what does that look like? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, obviously we're not together for reasons. I'm like, yeah. yeah, there's tons of things about him that drive me completely bonkers. And there's probably mm-hmm. tons of things about me that drive him completely bonkers. I could probably sit here and name my things. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm kind of a control freak. Yeah, but 
I think like just having a per an unbiased person or somebody that you can like drain off on like mm -hmm. oh my gosh he's driving me so crazy and I, I wish he would be doing more of this mm -hmm. and having somebody else that you're venting to that's not him. in your home right yeah, it's not him I'm not just like unleashing on him I am mm -hmm. taking a step back before I like come and have a conversation with you it's at a time when your child can't eavesdrop on the conversation mm -hmm. you know Cause like I grew up in a home where my, my parents were married until I was a senior in high school. It was not a happy marriage and mm -hmm. hearing a lot of like the things that your parents didn't like about one another. And then you kind of see that like you have some of those same qualities. It's like, well, if you didn't like that about that parent, then you probably don't like that about me. You know what I mean? And I remember like kind of feeling those feelings as a child. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think like, I really am conscious of that and like our co-parenting situation. Mm -hmm. Like his dad is not organized. He's not an organized person. I think that there's like a little bit of like ADHD kind of stuff that is uh -huh. there. And now like I kind of see that like with my son where like he kind of has some of those things and I'm like lovingly helping guiding some of those things and helping him develop skills to help him stay organized. He's got like a sticky note system that he's doing in his planner <laughs> right now that's helping him so I can help him kind of navigate those things. Like what would it sound like if I was like, oh my gosh, your dad's so unorganized and like, well, right. you know, you know like, I've never thought of that. I mean, it's so true. You know, and I think, and like if we have that in our marriages, right? You of have course. things about your husband that drive of you course. bonkers, you know? Absolutely. And I think that kind of being mindful of not criticizing or putting down our children's other parents, it's mm -hmm. important because Absolutely. our children are 50% them too. Exactly. They love them. Yeah. Yeah. And someone they love. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, it just hurts them. It doesn't even hurt the other I person. Know. And then like all that advice about finding another person that you can like vent to doing mm -hmm. it when people aren't eavesdropping that kind of mm -hmm. goes for like our people that we're married to too because oh yeah you're gonna have those days with those people too <laughs> it's very true it is very true you know it's funny though we kind of all have the same complaints <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. When you have those hard times and you vent to someone, you find that it helps you both. It helps Oliver yeah. and you kind of get through it. Is there yeah. anything else, any other advice for other people kind of going through? I think just really putting your child first, listening to them. Because like I said, like we have a really good co-parenting relationship. We all get along and we do all these mm -hmm. things together. And we do pickups and drop-offs at my home. Like his right. dad walks into my house. He has secret uh -huh. handshakes with my girls. So like there's very much like this family focus on our stuff. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make it easy for anybody in the situation so like there's things about him that drive me crazy like I said there's things that mm -hmm. I'm sure that drive him crazy about me and then there's like Oliver's perspective I think and I think that those are things that can really get overlooked when we're having so much of our own feelings not to say that your feelings aren't valid right like you're allowed to your feelings but you know, I've had very open conversations with Oliver before that he hates going between two homes. Mm -hmm. This isn't a life like that he would have chosen, right? Right. And of course not. Like it's not normal or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what other word to use there. But, you know, and it's not how I would have like chosen to have a family either is to mm -hmm. shuffle my children between a home. So, but you know, I have conversations with him about that. That's his hard thing in life. We all have a hard thing. We all have something that kind of stinks making the most of it. We talk about the positives of having two homes and it's more family than normal. You have more grandparents, you have more Christmases, you have more presents, right? More birthdays. Yeah. You have more of everything. You have more people that love you. And I think for him, like the good outweighs the bad, but that doesn't mean that when he goes to dad's house, he misses mom. When he's here, he misses dad. He's mm -hmm. very like conscious of that everything's fair like well I've been at your house for more days than I was at dad's house like listen 
me and your dad are so good about making sure that everything is fair, not uh-huh. for each other, but for you. Like uh-huh. we know that this is a need for you. So just like, yeah, really listening to them, their needs, their feelings, validating and knowing that we can't always fix our kids' feelings, which I think as parents, like we so bad want to do, right? You never want your kids to be feeling bad, mm-hmm. but they're going to have so many things in their life that do feel bad and just sitting in it with them and not mm-hmm. not necessarily fixing it, but just, you're right, that really does suck. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> you know, That's like huge. think about like when they go through like their first heartbreak or their first all these not things. Ready. I know, <laughs> you know, I was on with a client today. She's like in the middle of it, like her first love and it's so big and I'm like, girl, I, I know it is. When you can't be like, oh, this guy's a loser. You'll meet a or, great one someday. You know what I mean? Cause yeah, like, that's because not helpful. It's now. Yeah. And it's just like, it's so big right then, you mm-hmm. know? And so I think that no matter like what your child's going through, that's so big and it's their thing right now. You just have to listen. <laughs> that's wonderful though. I mean, like I can just think about that even with like your friends, you just let them, you let them say it sucks. Yeah. You're like, yeah, it yeah, sucks. That sucks. Yeah, and you just, you, I know. you, sometimes we try to fix even with our friends, but still, like, you, you just let them well, be there. you just, like, there. hate seeing people hurting, right? Of course, yeah. You know, if we mm-hmm. could, like, take away all the pain in the world, we would. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Wouldn't moms, <laughs> wouldn't we? That's, like, the one thing we would definitely try to do. No, I know. Like, I don't want to see my babies hurting, but that's part of the human experience. Yeah, and, and it honestly, sucks. Yeah, you gotta have the both ups and I downs. Know. I know. So, what advice would you give a, a new mom? A new uh, some mom. unsolicited parenting advice. You know, I hate this one so much, but I like live my life by it, and it's just mm-hmm. like enjoy it because like it goes so fast, and I just feel like my big age gap has really just like shown a huge light on that cliche. And I know that it's not helpful when you're like in the thick of it and your baby's colicky or they're not sleeping or you're figuring out reflux issues or like whatever thing like you're going through and it just like sucks so bad. Or like the toddler years that you just feel like are never going to end. (laughs) Like, when will I get my child back? Like, (laughs) why are you like this? But then you blink and they're 10. And Mm. they have their baby teeth, they're gone, and they have big teeth, and their face is different. And no chubby bellies. uh, They're just like the coolest person, and you just like miss every piece of them that was left behind. It's like, oh, it's gut wrenching. This all the faces and the phases and the voices of them, and like all of their littleness is just like slipping away. And it just does all the time. You just like look at them and you're like, you're you look different today. I I totally know know that. Like, literally, I just said that about Owen. I'm like, what's happening your face is different today and like oh it's just it's so horrible and it's so cool to be a part of that with somebody Mm -hmm. like what a joy it is to watch these tiny people grow but like I hate watching all the other little pieces (laughs) of you go it's like one of my memes because I'm just like oh like this motherhood thing it is the most painful joyful thing I've ever been through hands down (laughs) I think also, and and not saying this for moms who only have one kid that couldn't understand, but having two kids has really made me understand how fast it goes. Because when it was just one, it's like all I did was just look at him. But now that I have two, I compare like... It was just yesterday that you were a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Or Elliot is no longer a baby. I'm like... Owen is a baby. It's like you, you sit there and you're like, what? You were just like this. Yeah. When I brought him home. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I look Especially. at like videos from the kids coming to meet Fitz in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, they don't look anything like that. They don't sound like that. Yeah. They don't act like that. Like they are all so different in every single way. Mm-hmm. All of them. And you're just like, that was a year ago. 
and in a it year seems like such you're a all short, so different yeah it doesn't seem yeah. like a lot can happen in a year but a lot happens in it a year it all happens i know it, it all well. happens i know okay. so like i know that that cliche is so unhelpful in certain times but oh i guess i, I do it's important to know that it, it's it gonna so go away at least it's gonna go away it's a good thing and even and if like thing. you're in a bad spot maybe yeah. that's like some just like get you out of it the toddler years that you feel like are just gonna be here forever <laughs> you will get through them <laughs> they do not last forever it's three like you were meant so to hard. tell me this today <laughs> three is so freaking hard i don't know like they turn three and they turn to a different person literally, literally. on his birthday like the past month He's not, all of a sudden he's not even sleeping anymore. Like he's yeah. a totally different person yeah. since he yeah. turned three. We are having such a hard time with a three-year-old. And mm -hmm. like on her birthday, she was like so, so sweet. She was like her normal Josie self. And she was it's like- It's at midnight. And she asked for a taco cake. I got her her taco cake. Mm -hmm. And all day long, she was so appreciative. I've never like experienced a child that was like this before. She's uh -huh. just like- Thank you so much for my birthday. I've had so much fun. Thank you so much. I'm really so sweet. You're welcome. <laughs> and then like the next day, I don't know what happened. Like, where did you go? Who we are got him you? wet at midnight or something. <laughs> like, we're just having a really hard time right now, aren't we? Yeah, I'm having a really hard time right now. <laughs> I know. Yes. Oh, it's so hard. It is hard. And it's hard just to like calm yourself be oh like okay this is yeah. developmentally appropriate i'm not gonna lose it i'm gonna help her through this i'm not gonna die <laughs> you should put that on a shirt <laughs> ooh, ooh. this is not forever they do get out of this beatrice is now four almost four and a half and she has like seen the other side like she's coming out she's I've got a long way to go. Oh my gosh. But ooh, I know. And then I'm like, I was really going through it the other day and I was like uh -huh. talking to a girlfriend and I'm like, the fact that I then have to go through this again with fits makes me I know, want to pull I know. my hair out. Like this is why I have to be done because I can't go yeah. through this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. Thank I just have two know. more questions yeah. for you because I'm pretty sure that you are officially like a unicorn wonder woman mom. Like I've just oh decided gosh. that that's Stop you. It. Because you're wonderful. You do so much. You inspire me. I always ask everyone the same two things, and it's to normalize motherhood. Obviously, we're allowed to yes. have good and bad feelings about yes. it because it doesn't make us any less of a mother. So I yeah. always ask, what's your favorite part of motherhood, your, your least favorite part of motherhood, and your favorite part of motherhood? Gosh, I'm like, I have so many for both probably, right? <laughs> Just your top. Just my top. The things that I love about motherhood. I love just like how much they inspire me. And I just love experiencing everything watching them. I love watching them take in the world. And I really like believe in like this child led way of life, right? Uh -huh. Of just like hearing what they need and who they are as people. I think that they're the coolest. I love the cuddles. I'm just like, I love who they are. I think that they're mm -hmm. so cool. And I'll be in it. I mean, I get no sleep. <laughs> that will go away. <laughs> I love how much I love them. And I hate that it's like having four pieces of my heart walking around the world because yeah. it is gut-wrenching at times. It is so hard watching them go through hard times or have a hard time or be picked on at school yeah. or I hate that. I hate that part of motherhood and that you just have to like guide them and like love them through like hard things. And you just want to like charge in and be mama bear. Right. <laughs> Listen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I know motherhood it is the best thing and it is painful and exhausting <laughs> it is the post and i think yeah. that the way like that question that you ask mm -hmm. everybody i think that that is very very important because there's just no way to explain what this is like I know. And honestly, I'm actually genuinely surprised every time I ask it, everyone says something different. You would think that like 
we would some some of us would say the same things, right? But no, yeah. everyone says something completely different, and I I, I relive it with you or with them, you know. And you're like, like yeah, yeah, I love. totally agree. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing, yeah. and I'm sure other people who are listening, watching, feel the same way. I, I, right. I think it's it's important. It's yeah. okay to be. That is really interesting, though, huh? Yeah, it is. But like, yeah. also how connecting to like. Yeah. It's all so different for everybody. Mm-hmm. But we all have a high and a low and it's so joyful and so hard for everybody yeah. you know yeah. what i mean so i'm like it doesn't have to be the same for everybody but like we're all in it together and it is exactly. connecting yeah um, i know oh, motherhood <laughs> <laughs> well thanks again this has been so much fun thank you for having me linda it was so great connecting with you here you too. I won't keep you up any longer. I know it's our bedtime. It's our bedtime. Good night. <laughs> you get some sleep. <laughs> Bye, Linda. Bye. Hey, mamas. The way we spend our money has changed a lot since we've had children. So to help with the mom guilt and the need to still buy cute things, the Fruits of Motherhood shop is donating proceeds of each sale to every mother count. EveryMotherCounts.org is a nonprofit organization that works to improve access to quality maternity care around the world. Just buy a hat, a shirt, or anything else in the Fruits of Motherhood shop, and you help a mama in need. Just go to fruitsofmotherhood.com forward slash shop and use the code podcast to get 10% off anything in the store. That's fruitsofmotherhood.com forward slash shop, promo code podcast. Hey, mama. Do you enjoy a nice glass of wine after or during a long day of motherhood? Guess what? Me too. I want to tell you about Revel Wine Club. It's my new favorite way to get wine. Revel Wine Club is a personalized wine service tailored to your taste, budget, and lifestyle that makes buying great wine super easy. Tell them what type of wine you like, how many bottles, choose red, white, or both. Tell them how often you like each shipment. Receive, sip, and enjoy, girl. Check out which wine I'm drinking right now by going to fruitsandmotherhood.com forward slash wine.